We're in the living room today, and I'm doing doing a 100% unplanned, impromptu uh, rundown of what I found to be a very uh, effective and simple method for getting consistent results, excellent consistent results with uh, Crytox GPL 105, uh, one of my favorite lubricants. Um, so these are effectively Gateron Browns. These are uh, I, I can't remember if they're punchy or revo. They're just recolored Gateron Browns with some kind of custom spring. Really nice. Very smooth. So we're going to use GPL 105. I'm using a brush that's a lot larger than most people's. Uh, you probably can't see how big it is. It's a size one. This is also a tester brush. I got name brand for a reason, and that's because the bristles last a lot longer and they hold their shape a lot better. I highly recommend shell out the extra couple of bucks for a tester brand brush. Let me see how it is spelled. I do not have like any kind of Amazon affiliate link. Come on, you gonna focus, man? There you go. That's the stuff right there. All right, and so I use this big wide brush because it gives me great coverage. I can do everything in like one quick swipe. I don't have to sit there painting in the corners. You'll see what I mean. So the other trick I do is I don't use the vial of lube because uh, they tip over. I, I want to like make like a 3D printed holder or something for it. But for, for now, I just use the cap. <laughs> um, so you still got to like hold it so it doesn't slide around your desk, but it's not going to tip over. Cleaning that stuff up sucks. Just... I shouldn't even have it open, but I'm using the cap. Like a bottle cap, anything would work. It's, it's like a pallet. So what I do is I get, you know, a nice drop of lube on the end there. That's not going to focus, is it? Um, but I get a nice drop, and, you know, if, if you can see like a glob of lube, let it drip down into the bristles and until it just doesn't look like a glob anymore. And it's okay. The, the nice thing about the 105 is you can kind of overdo it, and, like, as long as you don't really overdo it, it's fine. So all I do is I just go through, I do one quick swipe and one quick swipe. Maybe I'll go back over it again, but I don't really. I'm not doing linears, these are tactile, so I'm going to leave the contact leaf untouched. And that's it for the bottom housing. It, it just, it, you, you can see, you can't see it on camera, but it should, you know, you hold it up to the light, it should glisten. Um, and next to an unlubed uh, rail guide and the switch, you'll notice right away. So that's done. Easy, simple. Next thing. Grab a switch film. You always got a switch film. Uh, almost all switches. There are some switches you don't want to for specific reasons, but when in doubt, film it out. So these are clear films, so you probably literally can't even see me. Yeah, you can barely see me holding it. So just throw it on there. Okay, that's step two. That's done. You know, these are a little fussy if you don't if you don't work with them very often. Um, but uh, like I actually just dropped mine, which is why it was off camera. But uh, they're a little fussy if you don't work with them often, but you'll get used to it. And uh, you'll you'll get a get a workflow where you can like just slap it in there really fast and not have to worry about it. Next, grab a spring. I have tub lubed my springs with a one thousand centi stoke uh, silicone oil of some kind or other that I got from a keyboard vendor um, called Mech Key Alpha. They are based in Hong Kong, I believe. And just uh, I I just don't want to get my fingers all greasy, so I just good old tweezers. Um, and this stuff, apparently it can be had a lot cheaper than they sell it, but they already sell it for dirt cheap. It comes in little vials, uh, which I do not have on hand anymore. Uh, I put that all away and I haven't run out. I've lubed. Oh, here they are. I have lubed. God, I've, I've lubed hundreds and hundreds of springs. It, I got two of these. They were like $5 each. This is, it's, it's gone down maybe not even half. From when I bought it, this stuff is incredible. Best, just, I've actually looped switches with it too. It's it's not bad. I actually want to experiment. I want to do a build with this for a whole board. Um, just tub lube everything, sliders, and springs, and just throw it all together. I bet it's really cool. So this this is great stuff. It works better than the paraffin oil for TX that that TX shipped with their springs, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than GPL 106 or another uh, higher viscosity oil that you might use for springs. Now, the hardest part is sliders, I, and I just did this off camera, but what I actually do with these Gateron switches, because sometimes they're factory lubed, which is not very consistent, um, and consistency is really key, especially for me with tactile switches. So I just take my thumb and I just rub rubber, you know, if I, my hands are already a little greasy, maybe I'll look at the back of my hand or I'll do my pants even. You know, just, I just want to get that off of there. Um, and now, 
the slider is always the hardest part with tactiles, right? Because you don't, especially on a mild tactile, you don't want to you don't want to lube these bumps on the slider leg, um, because that's what makes the tactility. And if you lube them, there's no friction with the contact leaf, and it just rolls right over, and you don't feel the tactility. Now, with something big like a holy panda or a zelio, you can lube that part, and and it will still be tactile because the bump is so big and so strong. In this case, that will ruin the feel that I'm going for. So I'm going to do my best to avoid that. And using this big wide brush actually, believe it or not, helps. And let me show you why. Um, so we already saw how the brush, you can just do one, two, literally two swipes, the bottom housing's done. The bottom housing's on, honestly optional, but it just, it's a little extra guarantee in case you miss a spot. You're not gonna miss a spot, but just in case. So the way this works is, you take the brush, and again, you saw I just dip the tip. You know, I dip the tip, and there's gonna be more lube on the brush than maybe you would think. You don't really need to wipe it off that much. Just get the if it's if it's a glob, wipe off the glob. But otherwise, you can leave it. And so, what you want to do is you you just it's not gonna focus. Is it? Let me see. All right, here you go. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so you just take this brush with with a good amount of lube on it, and you just take the bristles are going to like wrap around this rail on the slider. So you see how there's a railing or a little rail. Come on. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. There you go. So there's this like a this rail that sticks out and that's what keeps the switch guiding to go up and down, right? And so all I did is I took I'll flip it over I'll do this the other side. You got to do both sides anyway. Is um you take the brush and you let the bristles wrap around the rail without getting over onto the bump. And you see how that works like that. And that gives it a nice even coating of grease. And you can see on camera now, it's a nice shiny little coating of grease on there. And then you do the back. You want to get the back corners. You, I, you don't have to brush down. Just do. A, I just do like quick sweeping strokes across like Bob Ross kind of you know like ch -ch 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 sort of thing um, this is a very Bob Ross technique you know it's just one stroke two stroke get in get it done uh, uh, do it right you know happy accidents happen there's nothing to really mess up here if you get it if you, if you get lube if you really slip and, and get lube on the bump you just take your thumb and wipe it off now don't deliberately go do it because then you got linears but yeah, and so the the other the last thing you saw is I, I just I just get the the bottom here because sometimes the uh, the bottom th there's like a I'll show you the bottom of the housing has a little little guide for this post to go in um, and and in some switches that can shrink up and uh, cause just scratch basically it sucks it feels bad. So if you lube that up, it's just it's just an extra guarantee that that doesn't happen. These switches, I think that's one thing that Gateron, one reason Gaterons are generally smooth is they don't tend to shrink. The plastic like doesn't shrink or it's just smooth or they have extra tolerances in there or something like that. So it just works out. Uh, anyway, so that's the whole technique, you know, and then you pick it up. You know, don't want to dislodge the switch film when you pick it up and just uh, pop the spring on. Pop the top on. I try to make sure the switch film is aligned. Doesn't necessarily matter. You don't want it sticking too far out the back, because otherwise part of the switch film uh, gets gets in too far this way and interferes with the slider. I think I actually did it. You, you hold it up to your ear, you know right away. I did it on this one actually, so I open it, pop it open, just readjust where the film is. I use my, my middle finger as a guide on the back of the switch to hold it in place so it doesn't pop too far back. Again, you don't want to push it too far forward either because it just gets like all crumpled up. It doesn't work right. But uh, you know, these are these are pretty forgiving. Some switches are more annoying with films than others. These are pretty forgiving. And you know, I like to pop it all on the plate as I go because it looks pretty and uh, it gives me some sense of accomplishment. And finally, with this soft plastic plate, Sometimes you gotta pull up a little bit on the plate to get the, the clips and the switch to actually clip in. So that was like eight, 10 minutes of banter for what really should be like a one minute process. So I'm just gonna run through it. All right, and uh, just to show you guys how quick and easy this technique actually is, instead of talking about it for 10 minutes, um, I'm gonna do one on camera 
just try to do it close to normal speed while also keeping everything in the frame as possible. So you saw I dipped, just got a little dip on the tip, and I uh, just brush once, brush twice, maybe I'll go a couple times, make sure, you know, it'll start to feel a little, you'll feel it get like a little softer and, and, and uh, more buttery under, under the bristles of the brush. Grab a film. Try to do this on, on camera here, just pop that guy in there. All right, it's clear, you can't see it's on there, trust me, it's on there. Grab a spring. Mind you, I mean, this is the time, this is the, the actual time to assemble the switch too, not just, not just film it. You know, wipe off any excess grease or any leftover factory grease, which just doesn't, just isn't, isn't for us. You see, I didn't even brush that off. I just let the, whatever was excess on the tip just drip down into the bristles. I give it, you know, one, I can have one good swipe. Give it uh, another good swipe. I inspect, I do inspect, you know, to make sure it's not on, to make sure it's not actually on any of the bumps. It's not, I get the top, you know, I go over the top and I, you know, I, I hold this up close to my face. So it's a little hard to do, you know, I'm holding it out in front of the camera here. I get the bottom. I already got the back, and you know, I go over, maybe, maybe I'll go over it once again if I'm really, really feeling paranoid about this switch, um, doing it for the camera, but you know, I'm already done, right? Like I've been done for about, for several seconds already, so I just reassemble it, throw the top on, make sure I didn't crinkle up the film, which sometimes can happen, but I didn't do it that time, and we're gonna do it. You know, always test it with your finger. You can always reopen it. Get a good opener tool. It's worth the investment if you're going to be doing a lot of builds. And uh, pop her in there. You're done. Satisfaction complete. There you go.